What's up everybody? We are Diana and Phil. Diana's from the United States and I'm from Germany. And in today's video, we're going to talk about seven everyday differences between Germany and the United States. In no particular order, these are some very random differences that you might encounter in everyday life in Germany and that you might not be aware of are a little bit different in other countries like the US. So let's just get right into it. Difference number one is going to be supermarkets and groceries. We are starting out in the supermarket or grocery store, depending <laughs> where you're from. Grocery store. Some things are surprisingly different in the supermarkets in Germany compared to the US. For example, regular chicken eggs. They are not refrigerated in Germany. Instead, you will find them on open shelves as if they were something like dry cereal. Non-refrigerated eggs are very common in Germany and also in lots of other countries around Europe. In the US, you'll find eggs in the refrigerated section. This is because the USDA requires eggs sold for consumption to be washed, processed, and then refrigerated. This was implemented to prevent salmonella growth on the outside of the eggs. In Germany, the eggs are not extensively washed and the cuticle out outside protective layer remains intact, allowing the eggs to be stored on the shelves. A lot of countries in Europe prioritize egg production opposed to post-egg washing. Also, in the US, eggs usually come in 12 egg packs, while in Germany, it's usually 10 egg packs, or even smaller, four or six packs. Six pack? <laughs> milk is also something that will probably be in a different section. In the US, milk is usually in the refrigerated section, and they commonly come in these plastic gallon or half gallon jugs. Dude, the US milk system is so awkward to me. What? In Germany, milk usually comes in a carton or a tetra pack, and it's always one liter. And it's not in the refrigerated section either. It's usually on an open shelf and closed, it stays fresh for months in these cartons. The carton is then later refrigerated after you open it at home and the US milk sizes with their gallons of milk are way too big for small households, in my opinion. <laughs> also, fat percentages differ too, but I think that's enough about milk. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of little differences that we could go on and on about. We made a video specifically dedicated to supermarket differences and you can check that out somewhere if you're interested. Difference number two is gonna be environmental zones. Since I am now officially on the roads in Germany, there are a lot of road rules and regulation differences between Germany and the US that I've noticed. There are green zones in most German cities which require a special environmental sticker approved vehicle to drive in these areas. Yeah, that's true. And this law applies to anyone who's driving a passenger vehicle in Germany, whether it's a resident of the city or just a visitor. There was an anti-air pollution law that was passed in 2006, which was followed by most cities and small towns implementing these restricted environmental zones. And these zones are called Umweltzonen and they require the vehicle to have a sticker on the windshield that indicates your vehicle has been approved and meets the German or European pollution standards. Say environmental pollution. Umweltverschmutzung. I don't know why it sounds so nice in German. It's not a nice word, but it sounds <laughs> nice. <laughs> there are three different stickers based on emission levels and environmental standards. Green, yellow, and red. The green is the highest environmental standard and that is the color required to enter a city's Umweltzone. Umweltzone. <laughs> And I think that's not really a thing that you as a foreigner would think of. Yeah. So if you're renting a car in Europe and plan to drive in Germany, make sure the green sticker is on its windshield. The rental company should have it or may provide it, but sometimes they don't. And here's the catch. Even if your car meets the environmental requirements, you will still get fined heavily if you do not have that sticker. Yeah. And I think that's a very debatable topic. For example, I parked my sister's car overnight in Hanover once I lived there without the sticker and we got fined close to 200 euros for not having it on the car, even though the car is super clean and meets the requirements. Dang. How many donors is that? That's a lot of donors. That's so a lot of donors. That's a different so make sure you have that silly sticker. <laughs> Big difference number three is gonna be how we text. 
You might not be aware of it, but there is a huge difference in the way Americans and Germans text each other on their phones. Yes, I was completely baffled when I found out that Americans still use text messaging as their primary source of texting. In Germany, we did that like 10 years ago and now everybody uses WhatsApp, which I think makes way more sense since it's web-based, it's international, works on iPhone and Android. It does not have anything to do with like your phone plan. So all you need is just data and then you can text anybody around the world. Yeah, or Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. A lot of my friends in the US use primarily text messaging, SMS messaging. When I was in the US, we would have text message groups. And now since I text internationally, I'm using Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram messaging groups with all my friends. And it would just be so much easier if everyone was on the same platform. Yeah. One of my friends, Caitlin, you know Caitlin, right? Yeah, what's up, Caitlin? <laughs> she got WhatsApp to message me and her status is, I got this to chat with Deanna. <laughs> so thank you, I love you for that. You're a pioneer. Yes. Also, interesting side note, in a lot of Asian countries, the primary messaging app is Line. In China, it's WeChat. So WhatsApp isn't completely global, but it's pretty much the go-to in Europe. Yeah, it's true. I don't know if WhatsApp will last forever with huge apps like Line, Kick, WeChat, and also the more common ones for us like Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Discord, and all these other apps. They all have an implemented messenger and I think it gets a little bit annoying. Yeah. I wish there was just one that could do it all and we could just all agree on one. Would that would be so convenient. So much easier. Yeah. Difference number four is gonna be seating yourself at a restaurant. In Germany, it is very common to seat yourself at restaurants. It was very strange for me at first since I'm used to the US way where most of the time you have to wait to be seated. In the US, there are oftentimes a sign or a host to direct you to your table. And when I was a server in the US, I preferred this since I would know when someone is there and I could just add them into the task of other tables I was serving at the time. Yeah, I can see that point. Like in Germany, it's very typical to just seat yourself. There usually isn't a sign or anything, which even I find very confusing as well. There will be table reservations in most restaurants and those tables will have a little reserved sign on it. So you kind of have to wander around in the restaurant, scanning the tables and find an empty one for your party. Yeah. Usually though, any waiter that sees people coming in might help seating you. However, there's no designated person for that. And if the waiter is busy, you pretty much have to do it yourself. Yeah. And in really fancy restaurants, they might have a host like in the US, but a lot of them do not. And it also creates another problem. Imagine if two or more parties enter kind of at the same time and most tables are occupied, it can become like a race to get a table. And people can potentially get very rude in this situation. And I think it's just silly. People get hangry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, we noticed that with the pandemic restrictions, a lot more restaurants are implementing a type of wait to be seated system. Yeah. So sometimes the restaurant is only allowed like 50% capacity. So they are starting to seat people to keep them spread out and manage their capacity. And dude, it just works so much better this way. Yeah, I'm less stressed yeah. when I go to a restaurant. <laughs> Quick reminder before we continue with the video, if you enjoy these kinds of videos for any reason or even enjoy just us, every like, comment or subscribe is highly appreciated and helps us grow towards our next big goal of 100,000 subs. Also, if you would like more personal content or really want to support us, you can do that on patreon.com slash Deanna and Phil. It costs a bit of money, but in the future, we we would love to make more personal content for those of you who are really interested and close to us and the best way to do that is on Patreon. And today our family level Patreons get a shout out so big thanks to Marcus Ottensman, Fred42, Laura and Jared, Ethan Mitchell, who by the way is a long-term Patreon of ours and just recently started his own YouTube channel about animals called The Animal Channel, link below. Also Heather Kafner, Hessen Metro, Jay Reed, Charlotte Mills, Tarek Malkosh, Alan B, Jesper Nielsen, Stephanie Wendt, Danu, Jörg Michels, Jörg Michels, <laughs> sorry, Megan Rosati, Shannon Bradley and Simon Grand Nielsen. Yes, huge thanks for all the support and love, but now back to the video. All right, random daily difference number five is gonna be table manners. 
Speaking of restaurants and eating, eating etiquette is slightly different in the US and Germany. Yes, my grandma implemented decent table manners in us grandchildren and I always noticed bad manners of other people immediately. In Germany, good table manners is to have both hands on the table at all times, but no freaking elbow, okay? No, no elbow. So fork in the left hand, knife in the right, and you can only cut one piece at a time if you're cutting like meat or fish, you know? Don't eat like this. Or even worse, like... I think this goes without being said, but we'll say it anyways. Obviously, it depends on your cultural background and ancestry, family customs, since many Americans come from many countries around the world. With that being said, most Americans tend to eat with one hand above the table and one below, when one fork is held like so, holding the fork like a pencil. It's also not uncommon for people to cut multiple pieces, if not the entire steak, before eating it. Obviously, not everyone in Germany has these table manners. We'll just say on average. And in our home, I even embraced the cutting everything before I eat it as well. To this day, I still remember my dad scolding me about cutting and using the fork at a restaurant. I always remember him telling us not to slurp drinks so loudly when we get to the end because as an annoying kid, I was always like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting to learn and see about all these different eating etiquettes around the world. Yeah. In a lot of East Asian countries, you use chopsticks and there are rules with placing them as well. Yes. Um, in Thailand, we eat mostly with spoons, which I loved. Yeah. <laughs> um, then they're slurping and making all these other eating noises in some countries as well, yeah. right? And that's not common in Germany. It's just different in a lot of countries and I think those differences in food culture is one of the most interesting and exciting things. Food has just a way of bringing people together and to me it's a huge incentive to travel but um, I digress. <laughs> yeah. Number six is gonna be measurements. So over the past year Germany has been in lockdown because it's a pandemic. Yeah. Anyways, I've been baking a lot more to comfort the soul and make me and everyone around me larger. <laughs> By baking cakes and breads for our friends and family. Yeah, and I will just say measurements and ingredients have been a challenge to adjust to here. Here in Germany, we use the metric system, <laughs> which includes millimeters and grams, um, which in my honest opinion should be the one and only measurement system in the world. Everything is just multiplied or divided by 10, while in the US, you guys are using like weird gallons and cups and teaspoons and tablespoons, right? Yeah, we had to make a gallon man with quarts, pints and cups when I was a kid. It was so cute, it was really cute. But um, yeah, I don't know why the US hasn't already adopted and made the switch to metric. We learned it in school, like we should just continue to use it afterwards. It's just simply easier. So at the beginning, I was just baking and making my blended measurement formulas. Like it was part millimeters, part cups and tablespoons. And uh, I was trying to make recipes from the US with ingredients and measurements here in Germany. And it's a little difficult because the ingredients here tend to be different and they don't always react the same when baking. Plus there was a language barrier at first when I was reading the recipes. I mean, there still is, but it's way easier to read German recipes now. Little things like baking powder come in these little satchels along with like vanilla sugar and yeast and other things. And sometimes even German recipes will just reference one packet of Hefe or two packets of Backpulver. Yeah. So, it's been a fun daily challenge to adjust here in Germany. Deanna has been making these awesome banana cakes, brownies, and uh, you just made a baby of these two by mixing them together the other day. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Just creating gluttonish masterpieces. Yeah, we gotta stop that. <laughs> yeah. All right, and our last and number seventh difference between Germany and the US that you encounter every day is a very random one. The mailboxes. And I have a lot to say about the mailboxes. <laughs> First off, in the US, the mailboxes were everywhere. I could just drive around in a truck and just whack all the mailboxes with a stick since they are right next to the street. I think it looks kind of surreal like in the Truman Show. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Please don't go around whacking people's mailboxes. I bet people did that, right? The movies, they do that. Yeah, they do. In cities, mailboxes tend to be at the door or in a mail room. But yeah, in a lot of rural areas in the US or just neighborhood areas, there are mailboxes just hanging on the road, waiting for the mail person to drive up and drop off the mail and then continue on their way. Yeah, they don't, they barely have to leave the car, right? They don't have to That's leave the so car. That's so funny. <laughs> On the other hand, in Germany, most of the mailboxes are next to the door of the home yeah. and the mail person usually comes up and directly drops off the mail so they have to exit their car. Yeah. But the mailboxes are usually locked and you open them with your private key, so stealing from it would be pretty hard. I also found very funny the little flex on your mailboxes, oh, like in a yeah. movie. You know, the one that go up and indicate that you have mail. mail or not. We don't have those at all. And isn't stealing like mail and packages a pretty big problem in the US? I mean, I like the flex, but I feel like that indication makes it even easier to steal someone's mail if you wanted to. Yeah, well, stealing is a federal crime and you're right, it's not really secure at all, but it is convenient yeah. since you don't have to go to the post office and drop off or send your mail. That's true. Oh, yeah. they even take it from your mailbox, yeah, right? Yeah, they take it from your mailbox. We don't do that. Yeah. Another thing in Germany is that the name on your letter must match the name on your letterbox, your mailbox, or doorbell. Otherwise, you might not receive your package or letter. And I remember remember when we were just visiting Germany in 2018, I ordered a new passport at the embassy and I had it sent to Phil's parents' house instead of picking it up at the embassy. Um, weeks later, it still hadn't arrived and yeah. I needed to leave. And when I called the post, they uh, they said it didn't deliver. Now, I don't know if it was because my seven kind of looked like a one or what it was, the handwriting differences, or if it was because my name wasn't on the mailbox. Uh, Probably. We had to resend a self addressed envelope and put my name on the letterbox and it arrived a few weeks later. So those were our seven everyday differences, which were kind of random, but it's these little things that you do in life on a daily basis or a lot. And um, you don't really know that they're different in other countries. Until you go. Yeah, yeah, sometimes people always talk about the big things, how they're different and politics and all that bull crap. But I think these little things is what you encounter. Yeah, totally. It, it's so funny how a lot of it becomes routine when you live in your home country or wherever and you don't even recognize this until your routine of going to get your eggs yeah. in the refrigerated section is moved and you're like, oh, I need to switch it up. <laughs> That's true. And I think there are probably a million more of these. Yeah. So let us know in the comments below if you were aware of these differences or if you're from any other country, how do they do it in your country? Also, if you know any more differences that we should have mentioned, let us know in the comments below as well. Yeah. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. A big thank you to everyone who watches our videos and supports us. And a special thank you to our patrons for supporting us and helping us to make videos like like these. We hope you guys are all staying safe during this crazy time and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!